Yeah. I just want to thank you guys for joining us for the Myers Mile. Uh, you know, we've already had a lot of great content, and I'm really excited about having you both on here together. Uh, I got some unique questions that are going to pertain to, you know, kind of a running couple and all that stuff. So very excited. I appreciate you guys doing it. Uh, I want to say thank you up front. Um, but so let's just hear a little bit about each of your backstory. I mean, let's start with you, Sarah. Um, you know, tell us where it began. Uh, so I, I grew up in Phoenix, Arizona. I started as most kids like playing a ton of sports, um, played soccer, t-ball, whatever sport I could play or my parents would sign me up for I did. And I really felt like I started as, started getting serious with swimming and swam club for eight years and then did middle school track and cross country and was actually had a lot of success with not really trying and um, decided to fully, I didn't run my freshman year, um, I swam, uh, I didn't run cross country my freshman year, but swam and then that track season, I decided to go out for track and was runner up in the state um, in three events. And so then- Wait, your freshman year? My freshman year and um, in swimming, I was, the, the best finish I had was like fifth. And so I was like, man, I'm not even really trying for running. I should probably, maybe I should like switch over. I'll try cross country this fall. So then I went and ran cross country and um, fully committed then and um, made Foot Locker my sophomore year and then was a 10 times state champ ended up being a 10 times state champ from arizona i won junior nationals and the pan american games and um decided to go to the university of colorado and i was really um really happy with that decision um went on to run at cu before they were really the big powerhouse they had some success going but we were as a part of their first national championship team um, my freshman year and we also won nationals my fifth year um, and I won a couple titles individually as well um, and then I got the opportunity and I was a 10-time All-American and got the opportunity to run professionally which was a uh, um, really something I didn't know was even a thing at the time like going into college and um, what felt so lucky to be able to do that and have that as my profession, something that I love to do. So went on to run, um, I ran professionally from 2005 to 2012. And then um, within that time I won um, the Boulder Boulder, that was a big one for me. Um, I was US runner up a couple times. I was the um, US champ on the roads. Um, and won the Pan American Games in the 10,000 meters and um, had set PRs of 31.57 for 10K, 15.08 for 5K. I actually, I know you're like for the mile, I haven't run, I, that was one of my big regrets is not ever really training for the mile because when I started college, I was, I saw myself as a miler. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, and I ran 8.55 for 3K. Um, okay. So yeah, so that's, and then I actually made a little bit of a comeback. I had my children, I had Steve, my son, Steven, we, um, I retired or somewhat, I stopped competing in 2012 to have kids. And so um, I made, and then I had my son in 2013 and my daughter in 2015 and then 2016, I made a comeback and um, ran the Olympic trials for the marathon, like qualified for that and the um, track trials and ran 32, 32.11. I was only like, I was 15 seconds off my PR at, without much training that season. So um, I was pretty proud of that for my comeback and then um, I fully, I that was like my last season and now I'm coaching full time um, at Grand Canyon University and it's a small D1 school in Phoenix and really enjoying that and building the team right now. Oh wow, that's great. I mean, that's a lot of, uh, lot of accomplishments. I, I, hopefully everyone out there can even grasp 
you know, those accomplishments, what you just told them. And I think if they start doing the math on some of those times, they'll, they'll get it real quick. <laughs> Sounds like you had a little mom strength there at the end. Yeah, it's funny. I, well, I was coaching at the time when I came back as well. So I was running with my athletes and just found like so much joy in the sport again and um, got pushed and found why I was really involved in running. I just loved to run and having like the younger kids that I was coaching with me and um, getting to see how much they, they uh, got, how, I don't know, just how much they got out of it every day, it, like made me enjoy it even more. So it was, it was a lot of fun that year. That sounds like fun. Steve, let's hear, let's hear a little bit about your backstory. Uh, so I grew up in New Jersey. I, I played a bunch of different sports growing up. I started running probably seriously in middle school and um, I ran junior Olympics. I was the junior Olympic national champion in the 1500 and 3000 when I was in eighth grade. Uh, I ran, I was multiple times state champion in high school and I won the national scholastic steeplechase. So that kind of was like my first uh, go at what ended up being like my best event and um, I was NCAA runner-up in college. I was a multi-time All-American. Our college team won the NCAA championship my junior year, which was super exciting. It was the first um, men's team to ever win at University of Colorado. Um, and then um, I went pro. I ran for Nike until 2012. I was a U.S. champion. I made several world championship teams and um, competed a lot of the big Diamond League races and ended up running about 815 for the steeplechase and 356 for the mile. And so um, don't really run that much anymore. I didn't have the post baby comeback like she did. <laughs> uh, I was kind of good with it after 2012. Yeah, you're like me. <laughs> yeah I mean I don't mind I, I like when my friends are in town like we'll go for a run and stuff like that but like yeah I'm not like a putting in the miles every day type of person I can just imagine it's a much different pace now yeah it, what sucks is I feel good running but my 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 vo2 max is probably like half of what it used to be so it catches up with me really quick and then I'm like dealing with how sore I am the next day it's like <laughs> the worst possible cycle of training. <laughs> uh, well, it sounds like you're quite the athlete as well. So, uh, I again, you know, I'm, I really appreciate the fact that you guys came on here with that much knowledge and experience. I think, I think people are going to have a lot to learn from you. Um, real quick, Sarah, you touched on the fact that you're coaching right, right now, and just real quickly, what's it like going from athlete, you know, to coach? What's that transition like? I mean. Does it, is there some aha moments like, man, when I was an athlete, I didn't get it. And now that I'm a coach, I'm like, oh. Yeah, there's moments where you're like um, wondering what you were, like if, how it came across when you were an athlete to your coach and the questions you asked and the things that you did. But um, honestly, it's been um, very, very rewarding. Like I really love working with my athletes. It's, I, you know, as an athlete, you always, um, there's always things you like think back on that you could have changed. And now as a coach, like trying to help your athletes, not like make the same mistakes you did learn from the good, the things that you did well. And, um, and things that you, yeah, like the mistakes you did make and try to help them steer them in the right path. And, um, it's very, you know, I can't, I was telling Steve yesterday, like, I can't push myself. Like, I, I still love to go for a run. I like to keep, keep fit, but I, I struggle because I can't push myself the same way I used to be able to. And so um, it's fun to see your, at, like, get to have that fulfillment through your athletes now and see them, like, achieve the goals that they set out for and um, help get them to push themselves the way you're, you used to be able to, too. Yeah, you know, I'm a, I'm also a coach now at the high school level, and I got to say, for me, I, I almost enjoy coaching as much or more than I did running. I mean, I loved running, don't get me wrong, but the fulfillment I get of helping someone else achieve their goals is, I mean, it probably is as big or bigger than my own goals, you know, once I achieve them. It's, it's kind of a bizarre feeling. Um, yeah. So I, I think that's 
really special, really cool that you're, you went into coaching. I, I really appreciate the fact that you did that. Yeah, no, you and you're doing a really great and awesome job with your group. I see like how much they've improved the last few years. It's just, it's awesome. I don't know if you felt the same way, even during this like pandemic, it's been hard as a coach because you don't have that, you don't get to look forward to those meets and like you don't have this big goal that you're chasing right away. So it's kind of a letdown in the same way. And I didn't realize it until recently how like how much that affects you. Oh yeah, uh, it's it's definitely been a learning curve and, and it's a, definitely a unique experience, but hopefully that our athletes and all of the athletes out there and what they're taking from this video is the fact that you gotta, you gotta just keep putting the time in the bank because yep. it, this is not, you know, it's not the end. It's just part of, you know, part of the process. You, those who are working right now are going to get ahead of those who aren't. I mean, that's just, yep. that's, yeah. not, that's how it goes. Build your biggest face ever. <laughs> yeah. I, I tell my kids, this, this is opportunity. You yep. know, you, you got to find the opportunity in everything. So, Hey, moving on, uh, you know, so this focus is on the mile. However, that doesn't mean we're not, we're all about running. And I, my specific question, what I, what I love about having you guys on here, one of the questions is, you know, you're neither of you consider yourselves milers, like true milers, you know, I, Sarah, you're probably more 10 K 5 K 10 K. Yeah. Especially uh, Steve, I know you were a stud steepler. Um, what, how does the mile help you in, in those events? You know, was it really important for you to be a strong miler also? Or, you know, because you both have run really fast in the mile. Did you train specifically for it? I know, Sarah, you said you didn't, um, but boy, well, you I, had to, you I had been doing something to run that miler. I always consider, I think everybody does when they're young, but I always considered myself a miler and I wanted to be a miler in college. So my first two years, that's all I ran was a mile. Okay. But I found that I always ran better well, in the longer races when I could run a fat, like the mile just helped me, like you learn a lot from running a mile. You learn like how to race and how to like, like um, the speed you develop for that is really key, but you, you learn tactics like the tactics for that really help you in other races and like where to place your kick and um developing that speed so i would always run the mile as a tune-up right before a big 5k or 10k and um the only regret i had was when i was a professional is not like specifically running some fast miles like just training a season for the mile because like i i always wish i would have got my time down a little bit faster i ran for I think my best time was 432 on the roads at the um, Fifth Avenue mile, but I never ran a fast one on the track. So, um, but I love the mile. <laughs> yeah, I think for me, I've, I always thought to be a good steeplechaser, you kind of had to have like the strength of like a 5k runner during the beginning of the season and then be more of a miler. And um, for me, it was something I really liked running the mile, but it was it was frustrating because I would drop down and run against guys like you. And like, you know, it was like, I feel like the mile takes like some repetitions. It's hard to like bust it out your first one. And um, I was lucky I was good enough to get in some of the big miles, but I never felt like I was really ready to run. And, um, you know, I ran 356 early in the season and you know, I would love to have seen what I could have run like a couple minutes later because I got a lot fitter in the steeple. So um, I think that's that's kind of part of it. When it's not your main event, you always regret like not, you know, running as fast as you could have. But then at the same time, it's like, you know, you've got to really, you know, I was a steeple chaser and that was my better shot at competing at the world level. So um, that was ma my main focus most of the season. But it sounds like for both of you, you know, regrets aside, it sounds like the mile was kind of pretty crucial, at least having that, you know, what you learn from the mile and some of that speed and, and, and everything that you can take out of the strategy of it, that was pretty crucial in helping you in your own primary. Yeah, I, I, I think it's super important. And I think you, as you see all the best you know, steeplechasers, 5K, 10K runners, they, they spend a decent time running the mile and, or 15 to really, you know, it, it helps with strategy, it helps your finish. And it also is like a good fitness check, you know, like 
if no matter what your event is, a mile is a good way to check your fitness and your, you know, like your anaerobic and your speed, you know, and compare it across seasons, you know? So that was always like running a good mile or 1500 kind of in the, it was like a good check for me on, to see my fitness as I was getting into some of the bigger races. Now as a coach, I always make uh, the early, I, run, I make all my athletes run the mile. The first few races, like we double or triple events just so that they get used to running other events and getting their speed developed and knowing how to, knowing how to race those shorter events, even if they're a 5K or 10K runner. Oh, that's, yeah, great, mm -hmm. great valid points on both of you. Um, you know, let's change subjects just a little. So going from the mile to more of being a couple, what was it like? I mean, <clears throat> that's kind of unique. Well, it's not unique, but it's, it's pretty special. The fact that you guys probably got to travel the world together while racing and competing. I'm, I'm sure you had to split some, but what was that like for you guys? It was a, it was an awesome experience. I think that it, it really, it was, I mean, there were some things that were great about it and some things that weren't, I think, you know, traveling and getting to share the experience of being a world-class athlete is super unique and, you know, traveling all around the world. And like, I mean, even some of the trips you and I went on together, like it's, it's not every day, you know, not every person gets to experience like flying all over the world and, you know, going to awesome places and it was great that we were able to do that together and you know we'd go to Europe and we would just stay in London for most of the summer and you know we were together there I think those things were awesome and really understanding what the other person was going through you know like it it was it was great to you know I knew how much work she had to put into it and what the sacrifice was and so for either of us that was never an issue you know whatever you had to do you had to do it, it never came up and it was but um, at the same time, like, you know, being a, a world-class athlete is super selfish. And so, you know, a lot of times we were kind of butting heads on things just because, you know, we both had to do what, what we had to do. And, you know, I, I think you really just have to have open line of communication and just, you know, you also, what we didn't do well when we were younger is kind of like separate like non-running time, you know, it's like we would, that was like everything. And um, it would have been better probably if we were able to turn it off a little bit once in a while and just be like normal. And, um, but this, I think it was great. It was, I was awesome to be able to experience all that with her and, you know, have her by my side the entire time. Yeah, I, I always felt really lucky. Um, I had, I think I had a lot of my best races because Steve was with me and like, I felt like um, just more relaxed and, um, and excited to race and he always um I don't know he always found ways to give me more confident kind of he always had more confidence in me sometimes than I had in myself so having that person there to share it with you and just like Steve said like going through he under we understood everything that the other person was having to sacrifice and do to get to that point and then getting to like travel and see all these amazing go to all these amazing races and um, I think it helped like, yeah, we spent most of the summer, like we would stay in London for the whole summer. And if I was by myself, I think I would probably get, uh, probably would have got more bored or, um, homesick than I did, but having him there, like it was just, you know, it was like we were home. So it, yeah. it was, um, it was very, like very rewarding and looking back, I, I'm so thankful, like that was an amazing time in our life. We don't get to, now we both have different careers and we don't spend as much time. Like we aren't together every minute of the day, except for now that we have COVID. <laughs> so it kind of feels yeah. like we're back in training again, but um, yeah, I'm, it was a, it was a really special time. And, and we, we trained, you know, our, our college team was combined. So we trained together every day in college and then, you know, a lot of times when we we're professionals, our schedules were, were not that far off. You know, sometimes we'd be doing very similar workouts or the same workout, or we'd find a way to work in together. We're like, you know, it's just some, it took some of that out of it. I, I know like, you know, we would all train hard together and be, you know, at big events together, but you had to go home and like, 
you know, you would be doing your afternoon run or your easy run was kind of on your own. And it's, it was easy to be like, we both had to do it, you know, like, (laughs) all right, let's go, you know, and keep on a schedule and, and all that. So there was, there was some real positives of, you know, if, if I had a big workout the next day, a lot of times she did too. So like we both, you know, did what we had to do to get ready for it. So it sounds like, you know, a lot of positives really. I mean, there's the accountability to each other. Um, and I think one of the big ones that I heard was that positive influence, like the, the confidence that comes from the other person and the other person, you know, I think that's crucial because we all know how important it is to be confident in this sport. I mean, if, if, if you're struggling with confidence, uh, if you can at least have that person constantly chirping in your ear, reminding you of what you've done, what you can do and, you know, the work you've put in, I can imagine how great that could be uh you know as an athlete so sounds like i mean i got and like i said i got to know you guys now i saw you guys out and about and we became really good friends and you guys were always just fun to be around too so there's there's that going for you thanks (laughs) um so one one thing i want to know about and you know i read the book running with the buffalo so i know that you know there's a lot of I oh, just hype around being a Buffalo, you know, and, and that college experience there. Uh, what was that like for you guys? I mean, tell, like, I remember we were on a run one time, Steve, or I was in Colorado and you were like, dude, we ran up this mountain. Like this was one of our runs, you know what I mean? And I, I couldn't believe it, you know? Yeah. Tell us something crazy about that experience. So it was just kind of one of those funny things that, um, I guess, I guess the funniest experience that not a lot of people know is, like I grew up in New Jersey and my high school coach was actually best friends with my college coach, um, Mark Wetmore growing up. So I wasn't really sure. I always knew about Colorado, but like I would go to pen relays or something and meet the guys. And um, I, I, I always had it in the back of my mind, but um, I signed with Colorado and I'm, I'm getting ready to go out to Boulder, you know, to start my freshman year. And Chris Lear, who wrote Running with the Buffaloes, grew up right by me. Like, I had never met him before. He calls me up out of the blue, and he's, like, telling me about this book. And I'm like, what the hell is this guy talking about? Like, you're going to write a book? And so Lear and I, he's still to this day one of my closest friends. Like, we talk, I mean, we text each other at least a couple days a week. We talk maybe every couple weeks on the phone and he helped me in my career that I'm in now, but um, someone I've always looked up to. But when, when Lear and I first met, like he, some of the other older runners had been in Boulder for a while and Lear had started like his background for the book. And so we were at camp and we were in camp up in the mountains in Colorado, probably like three or four hours away. And we were driving home from camp and Lear was like, Hey, he had to drive his own car and stuff and was like, Hey, Steve, do you want to ride back with me so we could talk and get to know, you know, some background for the book? And so Wetmore was like on sketchy ground of letting Lear even come with us because he was like, this is going to be a big distraction. And like Wetmore didn't really know what was going on. And like, so we're driving, we all stop at a rest stop. And I'm, I just turned 18 that week. Like I was just 18. Lear was probably like in his early 20s. And, um, we're at the rest stop and everybody's going to the bathroom and the athletes are in the vans and me and Lear are in his car and Lear goes in and, and grabs us two sodas. And we're in the middle, it was like maybe root beers and we're in the middle of nowhere, Colorado. And it was like the old school in like a beer bottle. And so <laughs> we're driving next to the van on the highway and Lear and I are drinking these sodas out of a beer bottle. And then Lear had to pee or something and we pulled over and we lost the vans and I didn't make it back with the rest of the team. Like our, we never showed up and Wetmore just from the start was like, what the hell are these guys doing? Like these two New Jersey guys, like what am I getting myself into? But it was just an awesome experience. You know, he, he rode um, the bike with us every day and it, it kind of is what it is. I mean, there's some stuff that's probably embarrassing for a lot of us. And, you know, it's funny that, you know, it's probably one of the best selling, if not the best selling running book. And so every high school kid, people still like stop me and be like, Hey, you're Steve Slattery from running with the Buffaloes. And I'm like, 
yeah, I'm like that 18 year old runner, I guess, to everybody. And, and some people don't even know like what I went on to accomplish. They just, the only thing they know about me is from the book. So it's just kind of funny. Um, it's just like a really unique experience. And I'm really thankful that I got to, you know, participate in that because it's, it was, it was fun and it's great. Like everybody remembers their college and has these great memories and it's like I have a book about it it's kind of cool you know everybody kind of knows our college stuff so it's exciting yeah I mean I I read the book and it, it's motivational it's it's you know you, you there's a sense of pride coming from the program there's a sense of you know you just work hard and get it done and that's how it's that's how it's done you know and I think that's what I took from it and there's some fun funny stuff in there and different things but uh yeah, the, the number one thing I think for people reading the book and like coaches to take away from it is like when we were in college, we believed we were working harder than anybody else in the world. Like we, we would like, Webmore gave you this confidence that nobody was training as hard as you. And he made us do like kind of stupid stuff. Like we ran crazy runs up hills or like would be working out in the snow. And, and he, we kind of took our pride in ourselves of just being hard. And like, it, it's, it does a lot when you're in a race and you're like, dude, I worked so much harder than this guy for it. Or, you know, you wake up on at NCAAs, I think my, the year Sarah, the women won, it was like negative 17 degrees. And we were like, well, we're the toughest dudes here. So. And I was coming from Phoenix, Arizona, where I was training in 110 <laughs> degree weather, but I remember, and I had mono that season. And I remember standing on the line and I was like, I'm, I'm fitter than every freaking person on this line. Like I, if, if I can, like, it's cold, but it's not anything I'm like afraid of. So I, I don't know. He gave you Wetmore. I think that's the biggest um, attribute yeah. to Wetmore is the confidence he gives his runners and he doesn't BS you either. So if you're not ready, he doesn't tell you you're ready. Yeah, he, and, but when you're ready, he, he, he'll prepare you to accomplish what you're ready to do so oh, I think that's great because again we've already touched on that confidence thing and how important that is and that's something I try to give my athletes is a lot of confidence and and that toughness that mental toughness the if you can do this you can do anything type of mentality and you're right when you toe the line I mean if you truly believe that you're fitter and tougher and ready to roll I mean I remember in high school I don't think I trained that hard really but I thought I did. And that was part because my coach who actually at the time was my brother would, you know, this one workout we did, you know, he knew how many we were going to do before we even started, but he would tell me like, if we were going to do eight weeks, he'd tell me we we're doing six, you know, and he'd be like, okay, on the six one, he'd be like, well, your competition's going to go seven today. What are you going to do? You know what I mean? And I'm, like, oh, all right, I'm going seven then, you know what I mean? So I get out there and I run number seven and I think I'm done. And like, well, your competition, they're, they're pretty satisfied. They're going home. What are you going to do? And then, you know, yeah. if you're a real athlete, you're going, I'm going to do eight, you know? And so we do eight and you know, I don't know that my competition wasn't doing 24, but in yeah. my mind, I was doing one more than my competition. So when I went into races, I had that mentality, you know, I'm tougher, I'm stronger. I work harder, you know, and I think that that goes a long way. So, yeah. So Changing the subject again just a little bit, you know, um, let's, I'm going to skip one of our initial questions and I'm going to go into, because we talked a little bit about workouts and some of those crazy workouts. Uh, was there any specific workouts that either A, made you feel ready for like a mile or let's not, let's say not the mile, but maybe just your main event, primary event, or maybe a specific workout that was just so crazy hard that you were like, I'm ready. Uh, we at, at CU, we had a specific mile workout to, to get us ready. And, and I, I know it's funny because when I, when I went pro and I was training with the Kenyans, we did stuff like so much crazier that this wasn't even, you know, on a radar. But I think the workout we did at CU is good for um, stuff anybody could do. And so we were at 5,000 feet in Boulder. So altitude and Wetmore always told us that if you could do eight quarters with a minute's rest under 60 at altitude, that was like a sub four minute mile. And so that was kind of like a benchmark that a lot of us 
a lot of us kind of set out was like, and it was tough, like, honestly, you know, and it was probably pretty accurate. And it was one of those things like, you know, we talked about giving us confidence that, you know, if you could run hard, you know, it's basically two miles sub four minute pace with, with a little rest at altitude. Um, yeah. it, it was mostly true. If you could run it, you'd run, end up running pretty close to the to sub four. So that was kind of a mile workout for us. Yeah, we, we would do that. Um, I didn't do that one a ton. I did like my first few mile routines years on the team doing the mile. Um, I think the one workout that we would repeat quite a bit was 300, like the 10 by yeah. 300. And it was with usually 45 seconds rest. You had yeah. just enough time to like run across and, um, it was like a hundred meter probably jog. 500, 500. Oh, well that's the 5k workout. Yeah. The 10 by 300 where you jog across with 45 seconds rest, 45 seconds to a minute. You have, you can either jog across or do the hundred. Um, that one at mile pace usually indicated where you could be when you're at altitude. Yeah. Um, but and we, when we did the quarters, it was funny cause it was one of those workouts, like you said, Myers, there was no number. It was just who could do the most. So it's like, we're going to run 60 second quarter, you know, sub 60 with 60 seconds rest. And like, we're going to go until you don't make it, you know? And, and that was kind of, you know, when you're really fit, you'd be 10, 12 in. And so I think that was kind of a big workout for us. So for that one, did you get pulled once you couldn't go sub 60? Was that you're out? Yeah. So it would, it would usually end up like me or what, you know, when I was old, you know, most of my career, me and the Torres or me and George Torres and, and maybe Dathan, um, that was kind of a workout that I'd be able to kick their butts on some of the longer stuff. They would embarrass me, but that was one that probably re like dreaded having to run with me. I was, I was a little bit tougher. Um, you just to, had more yeah. anaerobic ability than they did. Yeah. And when, when they started, they would, they would a lot of times like try to push the rest and stuff to, to try to get me down. So I have to throw in like a 56 or something to make it more difficult for them. <laughs> I like how Sarah says, no, you, you weren't tougher. You just had more anaerobic ability. <laughs> let's, not fool, let's not fool ourselves. <laughs> uh, um, yeah. Yeah. So, well, Steve was, Steve was probably should have done more mile work. Cause he was like, so he was so good anaerobically. Like if we, even a few years ago when we, when I was training, he would go to the track. I think you were, Sarah Hall, was it Sarah Hall that wanted you to Yeah, pace I forget what I ran, but it was. We made him run a quarter and he hadn't run for like three or four mm -hmm. years and you ran 52 or 53. Yeah, that's, that's painful. It wasn't pretty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's, that's definitely painful. So Steve, have you ever, I mean, I'm trying to think back. I don't remember you running an eight very often if at all if at all did you run the eight at all i didn't so that that's kind of something that i probably ran two eights where i ran a in college i ran a thousand and i just i it was funny i ran a school record in the mile and it was in a dual meet and so we needed points and i came back and ran the thousand and i won the thousand i actually ran pretty close to the school record in the thousand and then I ran one eight in college and it was against the NCAA champion. And I was just like way too aggressive and died the last 200 and my best eight ever. I ran 150 at the end of 800 meter repeats as a pro. And so yeah, in Boulder, we were doing 800 meter repeats and I was like the last one I was going to go for it. And I ran like 150 flat. So I think it could have, I could have run decent, you know, but I don't really know. I don't know what like a good eight for me would have been, you know. You know, I, and I remember racing you in the mile and you, you were no joke in the mile. And uh, so I'm, I'm going to guess you could run a pretty good eight as well. I, I'm like you, I didn't run the eight very often. Uh, I kind of wish I did some more, but I, yeah. if I had to guess, I think you probably could have cranked one out. Sarah, did you ever run the eight? much i did in college i ran well actually i only ran one after a 1500 and i ran 208 um mm -hmm. in oregon um but i ran 210 in high school so like i did a lot more and i think i think i had more there to run but we just didn't um we didn't do the eight very often we just i i did the mile a lot 3k and 5k yeah and and that kind of goes along with kind of my philosophy as a coach is 
you know, a lot of times you could be the best uh, person on your team in like the 400 or the 800, but that wouldn't be the best person at the state level. And so a lot of times it's smarter to move on up, you know, as long as you can handle it, we move up, you know, Hey, yeah, you may be super, super fast in the mile, but how good can you be with that kind of speed in the two, yeah. you know, or you're a really good quarter miler. Imagine what you could be in the 800, you know? Yeah, I, I think that's, that. I think at a high school level, you got to try everything. I remember when I was in high school, I mean, I, I did, 400 hurdles. That's what led to the steeple. I ran the 400 a lot. I did the high jump. I threw javelin. Like I was up for anything. I was just like, all right, let's do it. And I, I ran a lot of four by fours. And I think, um, I think one thing that like, I totally not sure if I agree with, with high school running now is you, the, the kids, like the good kids, even they're so specialized, you mm -hmm. know, and, like, there's, there's kids running faster than I am. I, I know they train harder and are, are much more developed runner than I was when I was 18. But at the same time, you know, when I was, uh, I was good my entire high school career. I ran 425 my first mile of high school. But um, I, I ran every dual meet. I was just like another kid on the team. I was running two yeah. dual meets a week and my coach was good. Sometimes it would be the 400 and four by four and 800 and sometimes it would just be like jog the two mile but you know I think that there's there's part of it of just going out there and race that kind of makes you who you are you know and, and that's something looking at the kids now I feel like some of them you know they don't even run half the races with their high school and they're running all these big invitationals and it's like yeah they split plenty of time for that later on you know enjoy your your experience yeah, be, be a part of the team, uh, win, win something for the team, you know, that, that team camaraderie is something that you'll remember just as much, if not more. Yeah, and, and doing those different events, you learn, like, so much, like, you develop speed, you learn how to race, you learn, like, I was the same way as Steve, like, we, I would, I would triple, like, quadruple sometimes in meets, like, we'd use them as workouts, but you learn how to race and those things, and, yeah. um, and, and when you're running off events, you're going to get beat sometimes. And that's good too. Like you, you develop different skills doing those things. And I, and even in college, like we were, yeah. uh, I think like we, we had some fast times in college, but a lot of them, like we got to go to one or two fast meets a year um, at CU. And then the rest of the time we're running in Lincoln, Nebraska, we're running um, like small meets and we're, even at conference, yeah. trip doubling or tripling and helping the team score points. And I think it's just changed. Like things have changed a lot now where you don't, yeah. you don't do that, do that as much. And you're just trying to go for fast times now. Yeah, for sure. I totally agree. You know, I see that a lot. And I even see that in high school with even cross country, which is odd to me. People would rather go to a fast course than come. Like my course is really hard and challenging. And there's so much that you can learn on a course like mine, you know, um, teamwork, you know, yeah. how to pace yourself, how to start, how to judge the course before you even start the race. You know, that's, that's crucial, but we're not learning that anymore. We're just saying, Hey, uh, we're going to make them happy. We're going to inflate their ego by sending them out to just this fast course. That's completely flat and probably short. And I, I don't, I don't quite understand that. So I'm, I'm with you guys on that. I think things have changed a little and, I mean, I don't know who are we to judge, I guess, but, yeah. um, well, even in cross country, it like, I don't even remember knowing a time really. Yeah. I was just worried about going out and competing and winning, like helping my team and winning and learning how to race well. So I, yeah. I think you yeah. learn a lot. And then you had those, like, those tough, challenging courses and things like, like you got super fit off of cross country because you got, you you got strong, like yeah. super strong from those things. So, yeah, I think it's, you know, you got to just race and, you know, racing and not worrying about it's the best part of cross country, you know, it's just, and, and it makes you tough. And if you want to be a miler running cross country is like the best, you know, the best preseason training you could do. So I totally agree with you guys. So but even on that note, like learning to race like that, it's even on the track, my best track times were not when I was worried about, time I was racing like I was yeah. learning I was racing other athletes and I wasn't worrying about splits I wasn't worrying like I was just getting in there and being competitive and I think 
that's cross country is totally that like that's that's really yeah. important skill to learn and it it um overlaps into everything else yeah sure. I, I i couldn't agree more with you guys on that I, I think that's great um what advice can you guys give to you know runners that are just kind of starting out or or you know at the high school level kind of trying to make their way you know do you guys have any specific advice you think stuck with you that could really help them I think like the, the two biggest things is like, it's just running, you know, like don't think too much into it. Just go out there and run. I think the other thing is just make every day, you know, count, you know, and, and if you go out there and it, whether it's an easy day or a hard day or workout and go out there and, and execute it the best that you can, um, you're going to improve the best, you know, that's, that's something and just, just get it done. I mean, it's, you know, no one day matters that much, you know, it's just like, you got to put those days back to back to back and consistency and, you know, just, just have a positive attitude. One of my biggest things of advice is consistency over time. Yeah. Yeah. That's a big thing I preached with my kids and I think was crucial in, in my success as an athlete was having that consistency, whether, even if you have like setbacks, it's like, don't give, don't give up. Like you, like, cross training is just as important and can, can lead to the same results. Yeah. So it's just having, um, if you have a setback, like, which I had plenty of during my career, it's give yourself a day and then let's move forward and keep consistent and keeping that positive mind frame. And, and that's the same, whether it's running, um, school year life <laughs> afterwards, it's like just having that mindset all the time um helps you be successful in life yeah yeah so i mean and i think that's crucial right now Those, that's great advice you know uh we're in the middle of this covid situation and how many people are going home and just not doing anything versus you know those that are out there putting in the work they're going to be they're they're making those daily gains and, yeah. and they, don't, they may not even know it right now but five weeks six weeks three months whatever from now four months from now all of a sudden there's going to be a right that difference yeah, you know, definitely yeah and yeah. so that's great advice guys um so I, this is a this is a question i'm gonna really enjoy the answer to um right now who would be who in the mile come on rob I don't know. It would it would be interesting, as I'll have to say. I don't know. I but I run almost every day, but I haven't been doing. I haven't done any. I used to do like fart legs and some workouts, and lately I'm just getting. I haven't been doing much like that. Steve has much more anaerobic ability, but I think my aerobic base is so much better over the last. I think I could. I think anything I over on. the mile for sure. She would slaughter me, <laughs> but um, I don't know. This question came up with some some of our mutual friends. Like we're we're texting, and and I might have may or may not have had a couple drinks a couple years ago, <laughs> and I went like right outside and ran a mile just straight up and like training shoes and basketball shorts and just went for a mile on the Apple GPS. watch on GPS. And I ran like five fifteen, So I think that would be sub five on the track. And I think that would be. Oh, 15. <laughs> yeah. I think That's that was a couple generous. years ago though. That was like maybe two years ago. <laughs> I mean, yeah. That... But Rob, you don't know what his, his, S, his guess on what he was going to run that day or what he told us he was going to run that day was very far, <laughs> far off of what he actually ran. Which direction? <laughs> so Steve's very confident. <laughs> I, I'm I'm not running at all during COVID. I'm I'm just not running. And I turned 40 this summer. And on my 40th birthday, I'm gonna run a mile on the track and see what I can run with zero training. Um, and so hopefully it's you know it's, it's in the works. Can we get that recorded? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> we will we will be bringing that to you guys later this year <laughs> for sure a couple months the first right. two laps will look good rob <laughs> well i gotta say i think my money might be on sarah and and the only reason is because i think steve is so confident that he's going to get out there and he's going to blast those first three laps and with about 100 meters to go i think he's going to be hurting 
He's got hurt. If it, was, if it was a head-to-head -head race, I would just sit on her. I, but yeah, Smart. if we had to do two individual time trials, she might be able to beat me. That's a good strategy. Yeah, yeah I don't know. <laughs> well, hey guys, uh, I don't want to take up any more of your time. I just want to say I really appreciate the fact that you uh, came on here and you, you, you know, you took up your own free time to help, you know, the future generation of this sport. And I think that's that's what makes you guys just top notch uh, human beings, honestly. And you know, I gotta say, uh, getting to know you guys over the years, uh, I have so many memories that I'll never forget. Um, you guys were inspirational. You're always fun to be around, uh, and <clears throat> I think you've done so much for this sport. And I just want to say thank you. Um, you guys don't even know how much you've done, honestly, for the sport. And uh, hopefully, you know, hopefully after this interview you know, some of the young athletes that are watching will take the time to maybe read, read Running with the Buffaloes or, you know, look up your splits, look up some of your old races and see how inspirational and how great you guys actually were. So, uh, well, I, again, I really appreciate it and thank you so much. We, we feel the same way, Rob, and um, I hope they do read Running with the Buffaloes. And Sarah is not going to say this, but she's coming out with a book of her own. That's going to be out hopefully in a year or so. So Yeah, probably another year it's coming out. With, I'm writing it with Molly Huddle right now. Nice. That's awesome. That's, that's wow, great. Well, I'll, be, I'll definitely be reading that one. So I have to say, we, we always enjoy, we really enjoyed going to the meets with you, Rob, and having you come train with us in Colorado was so fun. And uh, I wish that's the biggest thing we yeah. miss is the friendships and all of our, like, coming to stay with you on the farm and, and all that we had a lot of good times together yeah that was a lot of fun i remember you rode the your motorcycle across yeah, the country I hardly out to the farm that was a great trip yeah well maybe if uh kelly and i make it out to arizona we'll we'll definitely meet up yeah, so we, yeah we have a room in the house and two crazy kids yeah so they had a lot of fun <laughs> we got two crazy kids as well <laughs> Hey, guys, I appreciate it again. Uh, you guys have fun at your birthday celebration today. Thanks, Thanks. a lot, Rob. Yep, we'll see you later. Bye. See you later.